In these prior lessons, we introduced the concept of mode superposition, and it uses the factored mode shapes. We also discussed how it is efficient with fewer equations that are uncoupled. This method can be accurate, provided we understand the assumptions and limitations. Including sufficient number of modes in the response will be important to prevent mode truncation error, where we do not have sufficient modes available to properly account for the dynamic response. Also, the mode superposition method is limited to linear response, so no nonlinearities are permitted. While we illustrated the mode superposition method via the application to harmonic analysis, other linear dynamic analyses such as random vibration and response spectrum are also solved using this basis of this mode superposition method. The mode superposition method can also be applied to solving in the time domain such as a transient dynamic problems, and similar efficiencies and limitations as those discussed for harmonic will be realized, and these need to be considered. We should clarify that the method of changing the degrees of freedom, as we have done here, from physical degrees of freedom to modal coordinates, is a general technique that can be employed to solve a set of equations more efficiently. For example, throughout these structural mechanics lessons, we're generally solving the equations of motion. But much like the mode superposition method was used to change the degrees of freedom to solve more efficiently, we can solve other sets of equations in structural mechanics using different methods. This leads us to actually an interesting point, and that is other solvers that we have discussed in this course, such as the explicit dynamics and rigid body dynamic solvers do just that. In the following section, we will continue to explore dynamics as we concentrate on forced frequency response, also known as harmonic analysis. We will be using what was learned in this section on mode superposition in the application to harmonic analysis.